Aloha. It's February the 10th, 2021. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. Give me only one thing. Time for Rediscovering America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And uh, the title of today's show is Trump's Second Impeachment Trial. That speaks for itself. Uh, with me today is Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, one and all. Good morning. Thank you for joining us at Rediscovering America. Aloha. Good morning, Tim. Aloha. Hi. Well, if you've been watching the last two days, what really comes to mind is front and center is the difference between looking at something in context versus something out of context. And if you're the GOP and you're looking strictly at the video and uh, that's the only thing you're really considering as a basis for impeachment and conviction of impeachment of Donald Trump, you're looking at things out of context. If you're looking at the evidence today and things that transpired before January the 6th, and certainly things that Donald Trump said after January 6th, you're looking at things in context and it's a completely different show. Jay, to you, uh, different show or not a different show, in context or out of context? Oh, that was my reaction this morning, listening on HBR, it was really amazing. I was just blown away by, by the presentations of the uh, Democrat managers. They were just fabulous. They were, they were uh, completely prepared and they were completely brilliant. And, and you're right, it was all about context. We may have heard you know, a certain percentage of the, these facts before, but we never heard them lined up this way. And it shows you that a presentation by somebody who you know, is well-prepared and, and has his ducks in a row can explain this to you in context is so much more important. You know, the, the, press, the press goes day to day and it's, it's ad hoc, you know, it's like what's happened today. And, and rarely, except maybe in the best in the best media in the country, where you find, uh, you know, a, a a story which tries to put it together, but they did that this morning, and it was shocking. It was way beyond my understanding up to this point, uh, and my reaction was, my God, this is much much worse than I thought. I thought it was pretty bad, but it was much much worse when you hear it, and I, it's all authoritative. They're not just blowing smoke here. This is what happened. This is really what happened. And, and what is my, it struck me is that I'm listening and maybe, you know, 74 million people in the country are listening um, and, um, you know, would, would convict uh, Trump in a nanosecond. But what about the Trumpers? Are they listening? And more, more directly, what about the Republican senators? Are they listening? And the sad part, and we'll see what happens here in a few days, the really sad part of this, the, the tragic part, it's out, of a, it's out of an opera so tragic is that those Republican senators are likely not to vote uh, to convict him. And that is disgusting, that that is the likelihood. Yeah. After this presentation this morning, I, I, I asked myself, could it be that, the, that they will change their minds? But then my other self said to me, self, don't, don't abuse yourself. They're not going to change their minds. Yeah. You know, two things come to my mind is one is, again, how I forgot so many things that transpired. You just, you know, because day after day for four years, we've just exposed to, you know, tons of information about Donald Trump and the things he says and does, and you just can't absorb it all. So I forgot a lot about it. But uh, you're right. The presentation of the evidence was in logical, chronological order. Um, what really kind of got me is I forgot about uh, Gilbert Sterling. He was the manager of Georgia. Um, he's a, a general manager. And uh, remember, he got up to the, uh, the, the microphones and, and implored Donald Trump to stop his rhetoric, that someone was going to get hurt, someone was going to die. How prophetic was that? And that's exactly what happened. And then, of course, the story about the school bus and, and how they tried to chase off the bus and how Donald Trump the next day applauded it with you know, uh, music and and applauded the, um, the video of someone trying to run that bus down. So, you know, these things add up and, and if you forgot about them. And, well, you know, one thing, one thing about it is we thought, based on the reporting over the article um, of impeachment, that the, the case the Democrats were gonna make was essentially limited to what happened on the day of the insurrection. And we, we didn't think that, uh, you know, the Democrats would bring in other things, but they did and brilliantly, and it fits. 
It is, it is part of the continuum of what he was doing. It is totally relevant. That's the point to yeah. what happened on January 6th. And so they could and should and would. You know, it was absolutely necessary for us to understand what happened, the context, as you say, on January 6th, to understand all these things that led up and all these things afterward. It's a kind of a, an inquiry into his state of mind. He says, oh, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to have these people riot on the Capitol. Well, that's a crock. When you start looking at all the things he said to lead up and all the things he approved afterward, um, he meant it, every bit of it. And he's per personally completely responsible. And that is so clear. And, and the Republicans who vote for him now are really distinguishing themselves in history. Let me go to um, Mitch McConnell's late night statement yesterday that uh, he is releasing the GOP senators to vote their conscience, regardless if they voted against uh, the constitutionality of this impeachment trial. Uh, what's, what do you think, it, Jay, what do you think is behind that? Is there a, a political motive or, or is Mitch McConnell trying to really say it's okay to impeach Donald Trump? I think it's a caricature. I, I think he wants to straddle the issue. For him, it's not about the right thing, and it's not about encouraging them to do the right thing. It's about staying out of harm's way politically for him. He doesn't want to be, uh, you know, the guy who led the charge for Trump. So he backs away. But at the same time, I wouldn't count on him voting against Trump in that vote. I think he's given us uh, lies and misdirection many times. And I can't believe all of a sudden he's found honesty. Well, I have to agree with you. Thank you, Jay. Hey, Winston, I'm going to go to you on something. Uh, Bruce Castor is one of the uh, the first defense attorney for Donald Trump, and uh, you know, if you not to be an attorney or anything, but if you watched his his defense of Donald Trump, your jaw must have hit the the uh, the table. Um, he meandered. He brought up irrelevant things, and then the points that he did try to make um, that would basically say that this trial was non constitutional were silly. And one of them being that um, this was going to create a division of, 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 of Americans, and it was only going to add fuel to the fire by impeaching Donald Trump. Well, I don't recall that being in the Constitution as a basis for not proceeding with a trial. Uh, he also said that if you were going to, um, you know, if you were going to impeach Trump, you should have done so when he was in office. Well, that did actually occur. He was impeached as a sitting president. Is this that the trial is taking place later? But also, he said that you should have convicted him of a, crim of a crime while he was president. Well, I guess the thing that comes to my mind is, that, you know, we've been operating for four years under the DOJ opinion that no sitting president can be uh, charged with a crime. So here he is saying that you should have charged him with a crime. Am I missing something, or is, um, is Bruce Castor kind of out there on a limb by himself? Yeah, I I'm not sure what is. I, I, I think. It, it really doesn't. Honestly, it doesn't matter what he says. I, didn't he say he should be arrested too? Um, uh, you know, the 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 arguments were were incoherent from all um, reports. But the reality is this. Yeah, you know, and Stephanie asked last week, who is the base? The base is the half of the nation that voted for Donald Trump. Um, the base is the 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 seventy percent of, of of Republicans who say they would consider joining the Donald Trump party. Uh, the base uh, that was that was in Newsweek and, and Vox had a, a similar one that said uh, something to that effect. Donald Trump apparently has been sitting back and just enjoying this because he knows he's going to come out of it stronger, um, uh, emboldened, and just with no rules and no guardrails because the Republican Party, as we have understood it or that we've been um, talking about, doesn't exist anymore. And I think we need to disabuse ourselves of the notion that it does. That idea that maybe- Well, they let me, let me, let me uh, yeah. chime in on that point. I, I mean, what I'm hearing is something very disconcerting that is Donald Trump comes out of this stronger after this, the evidence of this deplorable uh, insurrection on the government and the democracy of the United States and he comes out stronger. Um, yes, and, and that's just it is, is so, there was an interesting article um, and I, I, as regular viewers to this show would know, I have encouraged people to tune into Fox News and, and give yourself 48 hours watching Fox. 
Now I would say you got to move over to One America Network or uh, something else because as in Politico, it came out yesterday, I spent 11 hours inside the MAGA bubble. Um, it came out, it was the One America Network and it was to show how the alt, the, this completely different source of news, it might as well be in another language. This is fueling the 70%. This is fueling the conspiracy theories. The Republican Party has decided it's like, uh, you know, what we've heard is that there's, it's decided it's the big tent. It can have QAnon conspiracy theorists and people calling for you know the murder of Nancy Pelosi inside of the same room as people calling for fiscal conservatism. Uh, that doesn't work. And uh, so the Republicans now, the olden days Republicans that we used to understand, a principled conservative party, it may be down to 30% of people right now, but um, Honestly, in the heart of hearts of Americans, I think they might just be saying that, yeah, it's just still the thumbing of the nose at the system for those 70% who said they would join Trump's party. But I think we also have to take it seriously. And whatever is going to remain of the Republican Party, if it's a rump party or if, if Donald Trump actually splits the Republican Party, which is a very real possibility coming out of this, I think we need to plan on it. And that this is... Um, impeachment theater on some level. And I don't disagree that with Jay that, that the Democrats have laid out a brilliant strategy or that this is vital for the nation, but it's not the reckoning that we need. It's not accountability. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to get the addressing of the near overthrow of the government that we had a month ago. Yeah. You know, your I, comment I, I, a little I'm while ago, about... Winston, was really interesting. Yeah. That you said, and I've seen this elsewhere too, that this is all that he's going to he's going to be acquitted. Okay, <clears throat> this is all going to make him more powerful. Well, I like to go to the root of the problem. That is the message and the messenger. And two weeks ago, I would have said, you know, it's high time that Joe Biden appoints someone at the FCC that's going to crack down on false reporting and you know basically conspiracy as part of its news format. And then something happened. Um, Dominion, or I forget the name of the parent company of Dominion Voting Machines started suing um, Fox News and individual news uh, hosts. And I thought, well, gee, what's more effective? Either FCC trying to slap you on the hands that you're you know, just putting out false information or is a $2.9 billion lawsuit more effective? And I'm starting to think that a punitive lawsuit maybe is the way uh, that we square things around with uh, those media agencies that are totally irresponsible. So just food for thought. Uh, yes. Stephanie, Stephanie, let me go to you. Um, Can I respond okay. to that food? That yes, your sure, point? Sure, I mean, sure. playing fiscal, I think that is such a good point, Tim. It's so important to see the consequences that can be brought to these people um, to get them rethinking their situations or preparing to defend them if they can. But I was watching the the Fed this morning on on C, uh, on um, Bloomberg. And um, Larry Summers, the, the chief, was on talking about our situation and where we are with data and unemployment and all the other factors of the economy. But my, my point is that, that the, the Biden proposal for the stimulus for the new CARES Act is, is going to have an, a major if, impact on the economy in a positive direction as have had the other stimuli and so it makes the point that bringing the fiscal data and actions to bear on what's going on in this country we need to pay attention to those because those have and, and the corporate concerns they have more impact now than our politics our politicians are just toothless it's useless so um, I'm so excited because that's why I understand better now why the Republicans are pushing back on, on Biden's package. And of course they want it smaller because this sucker package is going to hit the rails here and it's going to be a charge forward for this economy in a way uh, because it's so huge. And, 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 and well, I, I, I might take issue with that statement because, um, you know, if Americans are going to get their $1,400 I'm sorry, but that's maybe a month and a half worth of rent. But that just I don't see. I don't see how that propels the economy. 
it's not going to matter whether it's a, a thousand or two. I mean, if that is the minimum. I mean, yes, that's 300 billion or something, but that is just one little part of it. That the all of the other support to all of the other topics in that bill are, are, are just going to kick this economy back going. So with the the so so I'm very hopeful with this fiscal really taking us over the top based on the effects of well, this. Well, if you're a consumer effects, economy, which if you're a consumer economy, which we are, I suppose that some of this being an introduction of these funds back into the economy on a consumer basis, you're probably right. However. Uh, you know, until we get our manufacturing sector back and the things that make an economy stable and, and has longevity, um, that's where it's really at. Your gross national product, um, low unemployment, those are the staples of, of a strong economy, not consumer spending. But that's, but that's what his point was. And he went over the 20.9 billion or trillion of the GNP last year. And the year before was just a little under that. And that this year with this stimulus package, we're going to do that and better. And it's going to make a really big difference. All right. And it's not, and it's not just and as far as people are concerned individually, and I am so concerned about them, but then we're also not going to have a bunch of homeless people on the street increased by having our renters kicked out or at having property owners, you know, go bankrupt because they can't pay their mortgages because their renters aren't there. I mean, that thing was going to cascade on us. So I can understand that. Yeah, those are two very good points. You're right, because yeah. that would so that would trickle that. that would actually trickle into Wall Street too, because that yeah, means yeah. the banks, the banks aren't getting paid. So that's why the Republicans are just stop this this package and or make it a lot smaller. Even, even yeah. Half. No, good point. Good point. Hey, yeah. um, Cynthia, good morning. So tell me, how is Donald Trump's defense doing? How are the defense attorneys <laughs> taking care of Donald Trump? Because the rumor is Donald Trump was fuming mad last night after he listened to Bruce Castor. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the disappointment. But, oh my goodness. What? I kept saying, whose side are you on, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, whose side are you on? Because he was saying things that the whole part about, you know, arresting him and, and I, I knew where he was trying to go, but he sure didn't go there. And then, you know, shown, he looked like he was on drugs. I honestly, he was making, and at first I thought maybe he was just nervous. And then you could tell when he wasn't shaking quite so much that he was still, you could hardly follow what he was saying. He was talking so fast. And that's what made me think, dude, lay off the Adderall. Oh my gosh. Um, and then to make this big show about how we had to pause for the Sabbath for a show, right? And then, so they decide to give in to this big demand that he has made. And then he says, oh, never mind. What's wrong? Yeah, do you have an explanation for that? Because I certainly don't either. I mean, I thought it was very, they, they accommodated his request. And, and then he said, forget it. I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand that. I don't either. It's like, I'll, I'll give you a theory on that. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, Trump told him to reverse himself. Why? Maybe. Mm -hmm. For whatever, you know, whatever Trump was ailing Trump. Um, and he, he, he had his own strategy and he dictates what the lawyers do. And he right. tries to get these stooges to speak for him. And both of those guys were stooges. It was clear. Well, well did you I we see Donald God, Trump's strategy in play yesterday? I think God no. gave him a special dispensation to uh, skip the Sabbath. Um, you know, he's probably got a hotline. Well, I, well, I, think, I think he had a hotline to Trump. And, thought, and, and the reality is that the, both of those guys were hired, you know, like hours before the, yeah. uh, the before trial that. began. They had no preparation. They didn't have command of the law, the facts, or the arguments the Democrats are going to put forward. They were a complete disaster by any let measure. Me, let me go to that point with you, Cynthia. I want to go to Jay's point. Is there due process? Uh, that was one of the criticisms by, I think, Castor was, hey, we're not getting due process here. Um, is that is that a process or a problem of the process? Or no one wants to work for Donald Trump and he can't get an attorney uh, well in advance and so they can prepare for a case. That's what's happened. He's lost how many attorneys already that he 
hired and then they quit because they wouldn't do what he wanted them to well, do. Well, not only that, but he won't pay him if he doesn't like him. Who would want to work for you? you know, <laughs> He does like them. He likes Rudy Giuliani. He hasn't paid Ju Rudy Giuliani either. So, you know, and this whole thing about Kevin McCarthy going down to kiss the ring of, of I don't think he went down there to kiss the ring. I think he went down there to get the story straight before the trial started in ways that weren't going to be over the air since people might be listening. So he just Well, I, let me, I don't understand. What, what story straight? What do you mean? They were all on this. They were all in this together, all of them. And it was for quite a while. And, and you know, watching this again, as I watched the guys, the Capitol Police just get massacred. They were hung out to dry. Well, are you alleging then this is a full, a full throated conspiracy? I that men are, the, the senators and yes. members of the house were all yes. conspiring for this event to happen? That's, yes. that's a big, that's a bold statement, Cynthia. I know, I'm always making bold statements and I might be mean, <laughs> but you know, and these are some of the things that make me think that, okay? Not just what's happened in the past, but what's happening now, okay? There are senators, our, the Republican senators, rude as you can be sitting there, going, reading the newspaper, going through papers like there's something more important than what's happening right now. You know, not paying attention while they were showing the video, not paying attention through most of it. No, I understand they were nonchalant and ignoring it basically, but I'm gonna go back to your point because you raise a good point. Now, this is not just an insurrection of our government, uh, the Capitol and democracy, it's a crime scene. Yes. So if, if you are correct and it, if it, it would be proven that there was a conspiracy for this to happen and people died, uh, we're now talking about a criminal conspiracy, not a civil one. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Okay, that's a pretty big deal. Okay, so one of the things that makes me think that is that they showed, okay, during the attack, there was people, um, okay, sorry, they showed pictures of the senators doodling and whatnot during the impeachment, but they were talking about this during the break. And one of the people were talking about it said they were doing the same thing on January 6th. Okay, that's what it was Claire McCaskill, that's who it was that said it. So these same senators that, okay, there's a giant mob that's attacking the Capitol. Everybody's terrified, except these Republicans who are just sitting there like it's a regular day. Not okay, all right. They were almost hey. anything else. Why weren't they scared? That was my big question. Why weren't they scared? Now, if you can answer that for me, and it doesn't have anything to do with conspiracy, good on you. But for me, All that's... Right. Okay. So, Jay, you alluded to something on your first um, comments, and that was the effect that this trial will have with all the evidence that's now being presented, a clear case of what happened and who was responsible, yet the impact to the country will be what? Uh, I'm not talking about the 74 million Trump followers, Trump voters, but what about the other half of the country? What impacts will we have? Will this trial have upon them and will it, will it change things uh, more dramatically? Hmm. Well, there's so many questions built into that, but let me try to go to it directly. Um, okay, he's going to be acquitted. That's the great likelihood. I mean, it would, it's, it's pie in the sky to think maybe they'll all cross the aisle, but I, I, there's no basis for that conclusion. <clears throat> so what happens if he's acquitted is he's emboldened. <clears throat> His base is emboldened. Um, you know, he, he said, he said that if he was convicted, his base would rise up and there'd be more violence. That we, we've seen that in the social media also. <clears throat> but likewise, if he's acquitted, his base would be emboldened and he will be emboldened. He'll do the same kinds of thing again. Um, and he will, he will cause them to do insurrections and violence in state capitals, what have you, the kinds of things they've been doing all along, but they'll be worse. And, and I think in 2024, he will run <clears throat> and he'll be president if, if he keeps on doing all the things he was trying in the past election. 
And if he wins in 2024, um, I think we all have to look at foreign countries because, because you know, it's a statement of, it's an analysis, uh, a, um, an examination of how to hold on to power regardless of what the rule of law is. If he wins, and uh, there's a chance he would if he's, if he's acquitted, uh, in 2024, um, the country's in the same kind of risk or worse than it was before the election. So well, let me, I don't know if that answers your question, but well, let me, let me, let me uh, actually counterpoint on that one that he may be president in 2024, because my theory is the House and the Senate and the president will sign a law that says before you become a presidential candidate, you'll have to go through a full mental evaluation. Donald Trump will fail. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, I, didn't say it was a, happen, I said it was a theory. I said it was a theory. I didn't say it was a fact. So. Well, I think okay. he's going to begin his campaign against Congress almost immediately. Mm. Well, you won't have to that. wait very long. I and he, right and there'll be that. death threats to the Democrats and all the you know stunts he's pulled so far to be right back on it. And, and the Proud Boys will be right back on it. And you'll have uh, sporadic violence around the country if he wins. If he loses, there's also a chance that exact same thing will happen. You know, he is the most disruptive, um, gosh, the worst president imaginable. The founders could never have imagined. Well, maybe Mitch McConnell finally realizes that. Maybe that finally sunk into Mitch McConnell. Who knows? Maybe okay, you thank give you. him too much credit. I think I do. Uh, okay, Jay, thank you. Hey, Winston, uh, same question to you is, what is the impact of this trial, not only to the 74 million GOP uh, voters that voted for Trump, but also those that didn't vote for the Democrats. What impact will this have on them? And how does that move forward with uh, changes in either how we elect a president or the requirements that we demand from a president? Great question. Look, we've got a sane adult in the White House today. You didn't wake up and check his Twitter feed or anything else. You just knew that you got a man getting the job done, repairing the enormous damage and task before him that this nation faces. The reality is the nation is still entranced by Donald Trump for whatever reasons. Uh, you know, a, a scary article that came out Washington Post said Republicans came within 90,000 votes of controlling all of Washington. And I think we need to, they're not Republicans. It, it, that's the party, but it's the vehicle of Donald Trump. It's re or, or uh, uh, it's something else. 90,000 votes, just 43,000 max on some sides in the right counties, we would have ended up with very different results. Christian yeah. Science Monitor has, a, and that, that one on Washington Post uh, was uh, yesterday, I believe. Christian Science Monitor comes out, was January 6th the end of an era or the start of a new dangerous one? Um, radical extremism has been rising and has deep roots. This is really important. I think people should read up on that. Which leads to the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin signing a military stand down memo to address extremism on February 6th. This is in the United States military. And as uh, I thought Slate had an interesting, very short article by Fred Kaplan on February 3rd, which called this the GOP's Bolshevik moment, comparing it, which, you know, in an unfair uh, way, but it said that the party's no enemies to the right strategy could destroy it from within. Of course, the Bolsheviks had no enemies from the left. Um, I think that what we have to do is realize this is just going to happen. This trial's a, a sham. We already know the conclusion. We will have facts for historians, assuming that they aren't purged in some future uh, dystopia. But right now, we have to focus on getting the country back into shape. Hopefully, that will wake up people. And the people like Mitch McConnell, he may be running under a Democratic ticket in four years uh, or six years uh, because his party doesn't exist anymore. So we don't know what the future will look like. But I think we we have to just buckle down, do the work that we can, rebuild the nation, and 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 just pray that that people wake up and understand the damage that has been done to our. Our, our, our nation and that it cannot be repeated again. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with prayer. Thank you very much, Winston. Hey, we're out of time, but I wanna go around for last comments. Uh, Stephanie, I'm sorry that you, um, we're, we've run out of time here. Cynthia, same as for you, but uh, last comment, please. Oh, I, uh, yeah, thank you, Tim. It's been a great program. Thanks everybody, I just agree with you. But I, I think uh, Winston's points are, 
very good. And how can we alert, I mean, how can we support our leaders to re rebuild our structures? I mean, we've got all this gerrymandering. We've got to get the DC in as a state. We got to change things. That's got to be taken on by Biden once he gets this package through. Certainly he must see that. Maybe it's our responsibility to remind the people that represent us. There's Maisie and chat so i mean we need to work on getting information forward uh from from citizens yes all right okay thank you very much uh cynthia same uh, last words there was an opinion piece in the washington post um by adam kinzinger and i want to pull a quote out of that for you guys that said my fellow republicans convicting trump is necessary to save america and that's my closing thought. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, well put. And he he really is an American hero. Uh, mm -hmm. He knows he's going to bear the slings and arrows of his um, of of GOP wrath, and he doesn't care. He's out for America first, not not his uh, party. Thank you, Jay. Last words? Yeah, um, I I think that some Republicans will come over, uh, but not seventeen. So I think we'll have an acquittal. Um, I also think that the, the notion of conciliation that Joe Biden has been, you know, trying to advocate for in the past few weeks, um, there's a chance of greater conciliation going forward because of this trial. And, and he may have greater control of, of the Senate and, and therefore a lot of the things that happen in the Senate. But on balance, um, my prediction is that uh, Biden is going to have to get tougher, and that's too bad because it, it would have been better if this had been done on a completely conciliatory basis. And I think we're going to go see some fisticuffs from him. And I welcome that because that's the, the only way you deal with a, with a pathological party. Yeah, Couldn't yeah. agree with you more. Thank Wait. you, Jay. Winston, last word? President's Day 15th. I'm really looking forward to celebrating uh, the uh, current president of the United States and, uh, hit, and and other great presidents who've come before him, but he is our man of the hour. He is leading us out of this morass and uh, we each have to uh, look within and work with our family and friends on having them uh, understand what we need to do together to recover um, our nation. All righty. I wanna thank you, Winston. Winston Welch. Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, thank you very much again for joining Rediscovering America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we'll see you again Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Aloha and be well.